Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming here today. I am super excited to talk about some of our efforts to develop edge computing solution for central offices. I'm going to talk about three areas of work which we are involved in. Our work in automation, our work to develop reference solutions, and our work to develop lab as a service. All of you are well aware of the growth set to happen in edge computing in coming years. However, let me take just one minute to set the context and talk about the drivers behind it. First 15 years, starting in early 2000, saw the emergence of centralized IT we call cloud, which was used for serving workloads at huge scale and at very low cost. Workloads such as search, online storage, e-commerce, social media, to name a few. Next 15 years, we are going to see this centralized cloud grow. However, we are going to see emergence of new set of workloads, which are going to be much closer to the subscriber, driven by the needs for user experience, for ultra low latency, high bandwidth, and location awareness. There'll be apps running on 5G network, which will require milliseconds of latency. There'll be IoT devices, which will be operating at very low bandwidth, but again, requiring high response time. And the same thing goes with AR experiences, and my favorite, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Just imagine, you're driving your car, and you hit a pothole, and Edge Cloud will be used to deliver that information to another car, which is perhaps only half a mile behind you. These applications are going to be required to run on various points on the edge. There will be many different types of edges, which will be determined by the subscriber connectivity and the proximity. One edge won't be there to serve all the workloads. There will be many technologies which will be there to deliver these workloads. Some, like SDN, NFV, and virtualization, will span across the entire network, while others, like fiber to business and residence, and fixed wireless access will provide connectivity at the local edges. Open source will also play an equally important role in delivering technologies needed for virtualization of these edge nodes. This is going to span across the entire stack of the infrastructure from disaggregated hardware to operating system to virtualization layer orchestration and beyond. Linux Foundation, for instance, is involved in several of these projects at different points in the layer. And some, like OPNFV and CORD, span across the entire stack. There are other projects which are outside Linux Foundation which are going to play an equally important role. Notably, on the hardware side, OCP will play a very critical role to provide a disaggregated hardware. We at Flex are working to put together a set of these projects running on open compute hardware to deliver CORD as a solution for one of these edges. So what exactly is CORD and why are we looking at that? Today's central office in the network consists of over 300 proprietary boxes. Just imagine as a service provider, your nightmare to manage all these boxes. You have high capex and opex, lack of programmability across all of these boxes hinders innovation, and then you can't bring services fast enough for new subscribers because you have to scale up instead of the cloud technology of scale out. And this is where CORD comes in. The goal of CORD is to bring cloud-centric technology to the edges. It wants to bring economies of data center and agilities of data center which are being enjoyed by hyperscale providers to service providers. They want to architect central offices as data center, and that's what CORD stands for. In effect, it will be a reinvention of central office. At Flex, we are working on developing an entire CORD stack based on OCP hardware. We use OCP nodes as building blocks based on compatible with OCP v2 rack. 
We layer it with a cloud platform, which is based on OpenStack, and a software-defined network, which is distributed in nature, called Onos. For orchestration, there are two choices which we have. We use XOS for service orchestration, and ONAP, which is a relatively new orchestration engine promoted by AT&T, is used for running applications on top. Today, there are over 25 applications available for residences, mobile, and enterprise use cases. For our particular reference architecture, we are exploring two applications. One is virtual OLT, and the other is virtual subscriber gateway. These are the two applications needed for providing services to residences. And this is one of a very compelling use case for central offices. Beyond that, we also developed an end-to-end -end automation framework which deploys this entire stack with a push of a button. This is an extremely critical, important element because it iterates your production, your product development cycle faster, and you are able to get to the right point in a much shorter cycle than the usual cycle if you had to put all of these manually. It used to take us days to put these stacks together, and today we are able to characterize all of that in a matter of hours. So let's look into the first element which I referred, which is the automation framework. Again, we use all of the open source elements to develop our automation framework, starting with a system imaging tool, which is used for setting images on the switches, configuring them, and also deploying set of test images on the servers, which are used for characterization of the rack further. We, there are three key elements which we go through in the characterization process. We use Ansible playbooks to first identify and inventory the rack to make sure that it matches with what we are planning to put together. Second, we update all of the firmware to the right revision, and third, we go and use public benchmarks such as Spec, Stream, FIO, and uh, Unix Bench to benchmark the system against CPU, memory, disk, and the system performance. Once the rack has been characterized at node level, we go and use iPerf to start doing the connectivity check across multiple of those nodes. This ensures that we have the rack which is running with the right amount of bandwidth and there are no unexpected connectivity issues in the rack before we go to the next stage. Once this is verified, then we start by looking at the production deployment of the server images across the rack, and then we use mass node to deploy the cloud operating system based on OpenStack. We use further cloud cluster characterization tools from OpenStack Rally project to characterize the performance of spawning of the VMs, latency responses of the VMs, and testing the capacity of the rack. And the last step is to use the remote GitHub uh, Jenkins uh, repository, which is running somewhere in uh, public cloud, to deploy the latest version of Cog stack on our infrastructure. And then this is benchmarked using our partner test tools. So this is the basic framework of automation which we go through as we are developing these stacks on OCP hardware. This network topology gives the same solution with a hardware perspective. It shows the key elements of hardware which constitute the uh, base topology of the cord stack. We have a GPON device which provides connectivity to the subscriber side. We have set of switches which are in leaf spine configuration which provide the connectivity to the nodes within the rack. And then we have management switch and a mass node which are used for orchestration and automation of the rack. External switch, which is not part of the solution, is still used for providing co connectivity to the remote repository for cord. Today we have characterized the initial pod which can support up to 400 virtual subscribers with capacity of at least 100 meg per subscriber. As we go through the production deployment, we have characterized half rack and full rack, which can support 1,500 and 3,000 subscribers. These are all running in a VM environment. If we containerize our deployment, we expect 
the number of subscribers supported to go up by at least twice the amount. So you can imagine a central office deploying a telco grade solution which is running a cord stack on an OCP hardware capable of supporting set of subscribers for a local uh, community. Today we are also offering uh, Flex Lab as a service where all of these solutions are physically put in a uh, lab which is capable of supporting up to 30 pods. One gig connectivity is provided and we also have ability to support your deployment and integrate and automate the tools which you might bring alongside with our solution. So why are we doing this? There are three reasons why we are doing this. First, we strongly believe that the greenfield applications like edge compute will require open disaggregated hardware such as the one developed under OCP. We want to promote this and we want to use our lab as a service as one mechanism to promote this. Second, cross consortia collaboration is very critical to bring many industry projects together to deliver a holistic solution. Many of you yesterday might have heard of a very interesting talk between Linux Foundation and OCP, which was led by OCP CEO Rocky and uh, Linux Foundation architect Arpit Hoshipura. They talked about how this kind of collaboration is necessary to bring industry to the next stage. And we are very happy to say that we are being at the forefront of that collaboration because we have been working on this for last year and a half. And last but not least, we truly believe that this provides a very interesting business opportunity for integrating, validating, and certifying solutions for companies like Flex as this goes mainstream. Beyond this, Flex capability spans day zero through deployment via multiple customer engagement touch points. I talked about software and hardware integration. Today, we are engaged in several early customer engagements via technology sandbox, and we are also working with many partners for global deployment of some of these solutions. Edge transformation is happening, it's huge, and we believe open source projects like OCP and CORD are going to play a seminal role in making this happen. In fact, one of the research reports indicated that 40% of end subscribers by mid-2021 will be using central office-based services which are running on CORD and open compute hardware. So the opportunity is real, and we want to participate in this first by providing tools to the community which can help in your journey to develop these solutions faster. We want to use Lab as a service to bring cross-consortia collaboration so we can bring more interesting projects together with holistic solution in mind. And last but not least, we are deploying these reference solutions with our partners across the globe. We believe that this journey is going to be long. We want to invite all of the software vendors, service providers, and hardware providers to come and work with us. We are interested in taking this journey and go far and we would love to undertake this journey with all of you together. Thank you very much for your time.